On this video, I am going to be looking at uh, the Gilgamesh epic. I'm going to be reading it in Akkadian with an English translation and <clears throat> some grammatical comments and also uh, some New Testament application as well. And also doing some comparative work uh, with Hebrew. So we pick it up. I'm looking at uh, the, uh, I'm working through Borger, B-O-R-G-E-R, -E uh, who did a wonderful job on reading some of the text. And uh, so, Sirisha uh, Leiserstuk, and so I'm, I'm using him in this, in terms of the transliteration. I'm doing my understanding and translation of it. Uh, so we begin in line eight. Utnapishtim, uh, and then the Sumerian was Z team, which also has to do with life. Utnapishtim, Ana, Sha, Shuma, Izakara. Ana Gilgamesh, that is Utnapishtim, to him, Ana is taking the uh, genitive here, to him, Izakara, speaks, a G present, third masculine singular from Zakaru, speaks, and the Sumerian was Mu-Ra, capital M-U-R-A. Anna Gilgamesh speaks to Gilgamesh. And uh, here we have Dinger, the Dinger sign, a sign um, of a deity, actually, for the most of the time. But he speaks to Gilgamesh. So um, we have the speech now that Utnapishtim is making to Gilgamesh. And uh, the Sumerian after Gilgamesh is Gish Gin Mash. So line nine reads Lu Apteka Dinger Gilgamesh Amat Nitsirti. Let me or I let me uh, reveal to you, Gilgamesh, a hidden ma matter or a word that is of secret. Uh, Luupteka from Luupteka is from Patum, which means to, uh, to reveal. So let me reveal or I will reveal. We have a G precative, third masculine singular, followed by the pronominal suffix, second masculine singular in the ka. So let me reveal to you, O Gilgamesh, here we have an address, like a vocative of address, uh, Amat Nitsirti. A word of secret. Uh, amat, it can also be awat, awatum, meaning word. And nitsirti, nitsirti is the genitive singular from nitsirtu, meaning that which is hidden or secretive. So let me reveal. To you, O Gilgamesh, uh, a hidden matter. For line 10. U Pirishta Sha Ilani Dingarmesh Kaasa Luuk Bika. Now we would translate this U is and. And a secret of the gods, 
which I will tell you, or let me tell you. U Pirishta is Pirish from Pirishtum, a secret. Uh, I will reveal to you a secret. <clears throat> let me reveal to you or speak to you a secret. Here we have the accusative case in the top. Uh, could also be of a secret, could be a genitive in T, but uh, I'm going to take the reading as an accusative. Sha Ilani, which the gods, which the gods, uh, or which is of the gods, we could say, relative pronoun Sha, followed by Ilani, which is of the gods or a secret of the gods. Sometimes shop can introduce a genitive, and I'm understanding this as a uh, plural, uh, oblique, but genitive plural in Ilanu, a secret of the gods. And the Sumerian is dinger mesh. Uh, dinger meaning God, mesh meaning the majority. The secret of the gods or plural Ka'asa, which, let me tell you, let me tell you the secret of the gods. Lu'ukbika is from kaboom, or kabu. It means to speak. It is a G uh, precative, third masculine singular, followed by ka, which is your pronominal suffix again, second masculine singular. So let me tell you, uh, and then we begin. Uru shu u ri pak ri ipak alu sha ti du shu shu ata. Uru would be the city, sign of city. Shu u ri ipak is Shurupak, the city of Shurupak, a city, Alu, Alu in Akkadian meaning city, and uh, Uru is the Sumerian, a city, Sha, which, Tidushu, which you know it. Tidushu Atta, and uh, Again, the relative which you know it, tidishu, uh, from the Akkadian wadum, to know. And I think of the Hebrew yada, to know. Uh, it's a pay w, or one w in Akkadian, and yada, a pay noon in uh, excuse me, yes, a, 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 a one noon, excuse me. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a pay yod form, yada, which could be a pay, uh, a one vav form as well. Uh, and it probably was, and then went to a yod, a pay yod. So, which you know it. And uh, I'm understanding this as a G uh, preterite, a third mas or second masculine singular from uh, Wadum to know. And Shu, the relative pro or the, uh, the excuse me, the uh, pronoun, third masculine singular, the personal pronoun, which you know it added to the verb. And ata meaning you. Uh, think of the Hebrew ata meaning you. So line 12 is somewhat unclear, um, but let me just read uh, inna, inna, nar, purati, shaknu. That is, which is in, uh, which is in, nar, the bank, 
or the river of Purati of the Euphrates Sagnu, which is situated uh, on the bank, we could say, or in the uh, on the bank probably of Euphrates would be the way we would render this uh, is Shagnu. Notice here uh, on or enna takes the genitive case, which is on the nar is in construct with purati on the bank and id capital id is the sumerian for uh, river actually nar can be river too but probably here we're talking about like the bank of the river which is located on the river meaning on the bank of the river euphrates shock new is located is situated when i think of some of these things here the id it's interesting in genesis an aid chapter two uh, kept coming up and uh, some have suggested that the hebrew there is borrowing the akkadian idea of river uh, id because of the reading of aid Sort of interesting, uh, there's not a lot of Sumerian ideas or background, at least in my understanding, that you understand in the Hebrew Bible. Most of the help is from Akkadian. But at any rate, the river of Purati would be Euphrates, Shagnu is situated. And I think of the uh, Shahan to dwell in Hebrew. Uh, where something dwells or where something is situated. And it's interesting, as a minister, Christian minister, I like to draw New Testament parallels as well. In John 1, 14, speaking of Jesus Christ uh, and his incarnation, it says, we beheld his glory, and, and uh, that glory escanos sin. The word became flesh and eskenosin from skenao in the Greek, which is suggestive of the Hebrew shachan. And again, it's interesting to me in a, an Akkadian cognate, shachanu, meaning to dwell. So at any rate, just a note in terms of some of the, uh, to me, interesting ideas related to Hebrew and the New Testament Greek text as well. So at any rate, we move on then. Uh, we're looking at the bank, uh, which is located or situated on the bank of the Euphrates. The city, Alu, Ashu, U, Labirma, Ilani, Kerbushu, uh, shu, kerbu shu, I should say. So basically, uh, the city <clears throat> and ur, capital U R U, uh, goes with alu, which is the Akkadian word for city, and, and ur, the Sumerian, it looks like to me, where the city uh, is. Old Shulabirma, uh, it is old um, as were the gods. Ilani, a genitive plural uh, from Ilum, meaning God. And Dinger Mesh here is the Sumerian capital Dinger Mesh, referring back to the gods. Kirbushu in her midst. That, 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 that is, that uh, the city itself is old, where the gods are in her midst. And so uh, the text continues where Utnapishtim is retelling what had happened. 
Notice in verse 9.14. Ana shakan abubi ubla libashunu ilani rabuti. That is, when uh, the heart of the great gods uh, to produce the flood. So when uh, it dwelt in the heart of the great gods, uh, excuse me, yes, it dwelt in the heart of the great gods, Ubla, a flood in their hearts, Libashunu, uh, meaning heart, and shunu is your pronominal suffix, second masculine plural. So a, a, they're, they're dwelled in the heart of the great gods, Ilani Rabuti. Ilani Rabuti, meaning uh, gods, and then uh, Rabuti, meaning the great gods. So they're, they're dwelt in the heart of the great gods, uh, the leading, the heart uh, being led to produce the flood. And in line 15, it talks about uh, Anu, uh, their father. Uh, there's some text here that uh, Abba Shunu Anu um. uh, there's some question mark in some of the uh, reading here but Anu their father uh, again Abba meaning father uh, I think of the Hebrew Av and then Shunu their pronominal suffix third masculine plural. So Anum, their father, <clears throat> we're told uh, here, uh, but it was not just Anu, there were others there that were planning the flood, it looks like. Line 16, Malik Shunu Kuradu Dinger Ilil, that is, Malik Shunu, their counselor, the hero, the hero, Elil. Malik Shunu is from the noun meaning counselor, and Shunu is the pronominal suffix, third uh, masculine plural. So their counselor, uh, Kuradu, the hero, Enlil, again, another uh, god. And then line 17, Guzala Shunu Nin Urta. Nin Urta, their throne carrier. Guzala means throne carrier, and Shunu would be there. So Nin Urta their throne carrier, Gu, line 18 then, Gu Galashunu Inugi. That is, Inugi, their canal inspector. Gu Galashunu uh, would be their canal inspector. Inugi uh, was part of this too. It looks like the text is saying, and then Dinger Nin Igi Ku Dinger Ia Itishunu Tabshibna, the Tabshibna, and that is uh, Nin Ik Ku uh, Ia was also present with them. Iti meaning with them, uh, Ta. Shibna, Shib, Shibma, was also present with them. So here we have several then that the text refers to. Anu, 
Yanurta, Inugi, and Nin Gi Nini Nigiku. And they were all together. When the when they gave their words about the flood. And so in line 20, it reads, Amat Shunu Usha Anna 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 Kik Ikishu. That is their words. He repeats to the reed hut. Amat, again, meaning word from Amatu or Awatu. And Shunu would be there, pronominal suffix, uh, third masculine plural. Their words, Ushana, Ushana, he repeats. So we have a D, looks like to me, uh, a D stem in Akkadian. Third, uh, he, he repeats present uh, durative, a D stem durative from uh, the verb to repeat. So he repeats ana to, and now we have ki ikishu, that is to the reed hut. So ana uh, takes normally the genitive, and I'm understanding it the same here then, to the reed hut. And he then addresses the reed hut. Ki ikish, ki ikish, igar, igar. That is, kik, uh, kish, reed hut. Ki uh, ikish, I should say. Ki ikish, ki ikish. Reed hut, reed hut. Igar, igar, wall, wall. And so notice he's addressing the reed hut, uh, which is different from the Hebrew, where in the Hebrew uh, scriptures, the Hebrew Bible, uh, the Lord addressed Noah directly. We're here, it's sort of like uh, the reed hut. It's a secret that the gods, some of the gods are spilling. And so he's addressing the reed hut and the wall. Ki ikshu, ki ikishu, shimema igaru chetisa'az. That is, read hut, listen or hearken, wall, reflect. Uh, here we have two imperatives in the, uh, in the Akkadian. Uh, and notice she memma here hearken read hut. I'm thinking of the Hebrew shama to hear uh, in terms of a cognate. So read hut hearken wall he is uh, reflect. And then line 23 lu shu re ip. Shuri ipru upaku. That is a man of Shuripak. Lu here is showing that we're looking at a man. A man of Shuripak. Mar uh, ubaratutu. The sun, and notice the Sumerian dumu. Maru meaning mar meaning sun. And it's in construct with uh, Ubartutu. So the son of Ubartutu. So he's addressing directly uh, what we might call the Babylonian uh, Noah. And uh, he's saying, man of Shurapad, son of Ubartutu, which would be... Uh, 
actually Utnapishtim. And then we move on to line 24. Uh, Ugur Bitu Bine Bini Alepu. Tear down, uh, tear down this house uh, and build a ship. Notice here, Ugur, uh, another command, tear down uh, this house. Bitu, I'm thinking of the relationship between uh, the Hebrew bait uh, in construct and by it. So tear down uh, this house and build uh, Gish Aleppo. Ben Ni is the imperative from uh, Banu. Build uh, this or build a ship. Gish is the Sumerian looking at something that has to do with wood, in my understanding. Build. Uh, a ship, Aleppo, which the Akkadian or the Sumerian Ma. So build a ship, Mushir Meshre, She'i Nafshati. That is, leave worldly wealth. Mushir is the uh, imperative to leave. Meshre would be like worldly wealth in capital N I G, capital T U K E is the Sumerian uh, for wealth. Leave worldly wealth. She E E seek Napshati, seek life. And uh, another imperative, Sha'um, uh, Sha'um to seek. Seek of life, shapat, uh, nap, napshati. So, and then he's going to go on to describe uh, how he is to build the ship. And as we read through all of this, we'll come to a section where there everything is destroyed, and the Lord then, or the gods then, uh, finally it lasts for a week. And after the flood, the gods are hungry. And uh, before, let me put it this way, in my understanding, he sends out different birds. And uh, similar to the Hebrew reading, but the difference is at the end of the flood, the gods have been terrified in the flood and uh, things are out of control. And at the end, they're hungry. They haven't eaten. <laughs> so when a sacrifice is done, they descend on it like flies. Whereas in the biblical account, it's an act of worship. And it happens after a year. So there's some difference. Uh, and when we look at the biblical account, God appears directly to Noah. And there's a reason given for the flood. Things have gotten so bad and violence and, and awful things that the flood is going to be decreed to Noah, who found grace, Metzachain, in the eyes of the Lord. And he would be rescued and his uh, family. Uh, when we look at the uh, Babylonian account, there doesn't seem to be any moral kind of reason for the flood. And also, uh, Noah brings his family in, whereas here the craftsmen are brought in too, as I remember. So again, there's some clear differences of the purpose of the flood. And then just as a conclusion, as a minister, a Christian minister, I have a deep interest in the New Testament. And it is interesting to me that the flood is used several times in the New Testament. Uh, it becomes a uh, actually a symbol of God's final judgment in Second Peter chapter three, as the Lord destroyed the world with a flood. So 
he can bring a final judgment on the world someday. And, and Second Peter uh, draws that in three, I believe it's Second Peter three. And then also it's of interest to me that in the gospels, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the time of the return of the Son of Man. People will be marrying, giving in marriage, and then all of a sudden, like the flood took them away, so the second advent will happen, and there will be a final judgment. Uh, and that's why it's so important, I believe, as a, as a teacher, uh, a Christian teacher, of having our faith rooted in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and looking forward to his uh, second coming, to his second advent. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, I thought I had made some notes early on about the Akkadian and done sort of like an interlinear, and I thought I would do it again. You know, I'm doing this more or less as a hobby and retirement. My main emphasis is in biblical Greek and Hebrew. So it helps me to sort of review what I learned years ago. Well, thank you, and I hope this can be of help.